Lisa Jenkins from Yacht and Lashley, and today I'm speaking with Mark James, who's the Chief Executive of Kamalanja County Council. Hello Mark, thank you for talking with us today. Hello Lisa. So tell me, what is it like being the Chief Executive of Kamalanja County Council? Um, it's a very busy and interesting job. Um, it's a very good job, um, very exciting. You never quite know what's coming in through the door in the morning. And whilst you've got a series of meetings and things that you know are in the diary, you never quite know what's going to arrive on your on your desk first thing in the morning. But um, it's a good opportunity to shape uh, how Carmarthenshire is, whether that's building new schools, houses, shops, cinemas, uh, hotels, all, all sorts of things, or just providing services to people that really need them. People who are desperate for housing um, or who are finding it difficult to, to cope, whether that's because they're elderly or they've got children with difficulties, we're able to do a lot of things to help people in the community. So, very, very interesting job. So, how do you think that Carmarthenshire is coping with the recession? Um, in, 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 in different areas, in different ways, um, businesses on the whole that are still in business are, are coping reasonably well in some areas, in others they're having difficulty. And you can see that, in, for example, on the high street, some shops are doing very well, and others are really not doing so well. And I think it's the same in the general population. Our employment figures are holding up quite well in Carmarthenshire. We're busy trying to create as many jobs as we can and working with businesses and other public sector organisations, particularly to create jobs for young people. Young people in particular are having great difficulty in our, in our communities at the moment, getting that first step on the jobs ladder. So we've got some proposals shortly, for example, to bring on we hope a hundred young people into work in the county council, modern apprentices, graduate trainee positions, work experience, just to give them that first taste of employment and hopefully they'll go on then to do other things. Yeah, so it's very positive to hear that something's actually being done to help these people. We've been, working, we've been working for some time on that. We did a jobs fair in Clinetley recently mm -hmm. where we had 24 employers come in. We had 100 jobs on offer between the 24 employers, ourselves included. Mm -hmm. We had 1,000 people turn up to that oh. in the first four hours. People were actually queued around the building. And I think that mm -hmm. shows you how you know, desperate people are to get employment. So mm -hmm. anything that we can do, either ourselves as an employer uh, or to uh, encourage the private sector to invest, we're working as hard as we can to do that. Mm -hmm. It's positive that all those people are actually seeking employment and not just... Yeah, I, I think people are just generally finding it difficult. Those in employment are, are obviously you know, okay at the moment, but it's mm -hmm. the, the creation of new jobs that, that's difficult at the moment because people are reluctant to move when they're in a job, so there isn't the usual sort of movement in the jobs market that we've seen previously. Mm -hmm. Well, the Eastgate development that's being built in Tlachley at the moment, that's a big talking point. What are you hoping that this will add to the town? Create a lot of jobs, yeah. <laughs> uh, which, is, which is a good thing at the moment. In fact, the employers there are now advertising. Some of those were with us when we did the jobs fair in Clenetley uh, last week. So, you know, they were there trying to recruit people. The other thing it'll do is breathe new life into the town centre. Uh, what it's done in Carmarthen, because we did a similar development there with the multiplex mm -hmm. cinema and some restaurants, is it's brought hundreds of thousands of people into the town centre. Mm -hmm. The cinema in Carmarthen saw half a million visitors in a year which would not have come into the town centre previously. Do you think Clenetley will benefit? We are that hoping way? that Clenetley will do exactly the same. We were delighted when Odeon came on board mm -hmm. as, the, as the cinema offering and they put in some extra uh, funds, some extra uh, investment into the town centre. We've got a, a range of restaurants, cafes, the hotel, the office and the new theatre, all of which I think will bring more people into the town. And as they do that, we hope it will spread a lot back into the town centre mm -hmm. along Park Street and then back up into the main town centre with mm. new businesses coming in. We, we, we're already seeing some of that because people are buying buildings. Yeah, because at the moment the town centre is full of so many closed down shops and they've been turned into various uh, cash generators and pawnbrokers. Is there any specific plans in, in place to help the retail in the actual town centre? Uh, you see sort of pen shops and that sort of thing. Mm. It's actually what people are looking for want at the moment and I think we're seeing that all over the UK yes. um, with the economy as it is people are mm -hmm. having to turn to places like that unfortunately so you know they're, they're doing very good business I think that's a sign of the times again mm -hmm. the Eastgate development we're hoping will encourage other shops to come into the town centre mm -hmm. we can't drag retailers into the town yeah. centre <laughs> um, we have done our best to turn some of the empty shops into um, 
usable services. We got the Elim Church in there, for example, with their with their cafe. Uh, we help them to come in, so it isn't uh, just a charity shop. It's actually providing a service, a cafe, as well as selling things. We'll be trying to do other things as well. We've got the free car parking in the multi-storey car park. Again, that was designed to help to encourage people to come in, and that's had some success as well. Because yeah, at the moment, a lot of the areas close to town where I used to park, for example, they, they've become permit holders only now. So I'm kind of finding myself feeling, oh, I want to go to Trostra because it's easier to park, isn't it, really? Uh, it, it is, and Trostra is very successful. Yeah. And I know that you know people have different views of Trostra, but it's been very, very successful. Yeah. It's created about a thousand jobs down there. Mm -hmm. So there are lots of people working in Trostra. It now brings in people from Swansea, from the valleys, mm -hmm. and further away, because it is a shopping destination. So, you know, the, although the issue with the town centre, we're, we're working on that with Eastgate, but Trostra and Pemberton are very, very successful. Mm, yes, and I mean, that is also bringing people into the town as well, isn't it? Of course. Well, that's part of, you know, the, the, whole, the whole package that we've got in Trinetley, starting at the Lecha with Mechanists, the golf course, working all the way up to Pembrey. We've been doing developments all the way along. We're in the town centre at the moment. We've done industrial units, we've done leisure units. So we're working on the whole, on the whole thing. And um, well, I think it's having some success. Mm -hmm. Certainly different from what it used to look like 15 years ago. Definitely. It's interesting when you look at the old pictures, isn't it? How the town Lots of derelictions and everything, yeah. yeah. It's quite sad, but that's... Well, life, life moves on, really. Things mm -hmm. don't stay... And th those town centres that try and stay as they are, mm -hmm. they won't. There's only one way they'll go, and that's down. Mm -hmm. And you, you see that all over the UK. Whereas if you look around the UK at the moment, at how many town centres are having significant investment in them? Mm -hmm. Very few. Clashley's having 65 million spent on the town centre. Um, you know, that's a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And we're hoping for some very positive outcomes. We're seeing some of them at the moment. Mm -hmm. The library we finished, Clashley House, we're in at the moment and doing it. The offices will be finished and the hotel will be open. So lots of positive things to come. And then we've got about 30 million left over to spend on doing up the town centre. Mm -hmm. Moment, many people are very fond of theatre actually and it's become quite an eyesore really. Um, could you give a firm commitment really whether something will be done to ensure that the iconic building has a future? Okay. Um, it's interesting you see many people uh, you know, love it and they don't go there. That's part of the issue. Um, if you look at the, the multiplex they'll be expecting about 400,000 visitors a year. Mm -hmm. The Ashley Centre gets 20,000. So 20 mm -hmm. times more people will go to a multiplex. We've got the cinema. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's very tired. It's not fit for purpose anymore, which is why we've had to move on. Um, the building is now listed, mm -hmm. so um, we'll have to try and do something with it. We have no particular plans at the moment, so I can't guarantee anything. Mm -hmm. Money is extremely tight on just providing the services we have to. Mm -hmm. um, so we've got some interest. We, we hope that we'll be able to find somebody to come in and use the building. So mm -hmm. we've got some interest at the moment and we, we're working on that to see if we can bring that to fruition. So it's not going to be knocked down and turned into a car park? No. Okay. It's, li <laughs> it's listed, so we couldn't knock it down if we wanted to. No, I have many fond memories of performing there myself. <laughs> yes, yes, I'm sure many people do. As I said, it's a pity people didn't keep going there because it's just yeah. become an economic. I think it's because they want to go to somewhere that they recognise as a brand name, don't they, such as an Odeon? Uh, I think it's a different experience. A mod modern multiplex is an entirely different mm. experience to what we've done before, and it's just where the world has moved to. And mm. you know, the, the building that we have left in the Ashley Centre, we'll have to see whether we can find mm. a, a good use for it um, so that it can be reused. Okay, um, so the town is also filled with other empty buildings, such as the churches and the YMCA building. Um, how do you feel that they can be made relevant internationally? Does the council have any plans for them? Uh, well, like the Zion Church, which we're working into the theatre, that mm, be, uh, so yeah. I was in there the other week with one of the, in fact, two government ministers. Uh, we, we took them around to have a look. Great reuse mm. of the space. It'll be rehearsal space on the top floor. The actual church building below we've done up, so the church should be able to start mm. using that again, which is which is really fantastic. Oh, so it'll be actual functioning Arch church. Oh yes, oh yes, okay. yes. So I, I think we can do things like that, but mm. a lot of the old buildings, again, you know, they, their use in the past has finished, it's ended, so we've got to find a new use for them. We've been successful in other parts um, of the county and internationally from time to time. So YMCA in particular, we've looked at and we're still looking at, but mm. it's going to cost an awful lot of money. That thing you have to decide if it's a viable. Investment. We have to have a viable business plan mm -hmm. first with an end use and then find the money to do it. Now, we've taken actually house, 
yeah. we, we've done that six million mm. the library we put four and a half million in and we've mm. you know, we've done that in a way that people can come back into it and use mm. it again YMCA will be looking at so when is Leslie House going to be open to the public what's the purpose of that yes there will be uh, a variety of uses going on there but people will be able to go in and see the building which will yeah. be which will be great it's one of the perhaps most mm. significant buildings in the town it's been derelict mm. for such a long time and when we went in there initially to look at it, we found things in there that nobody knew were there. Mm -hmm. Some wonderful paintings behind boards that had been stuck on them. So wow. when the boards came off, uh, there were some lovely friezes there. And it was you know, really, really impressive. Mm -hmm. um, but we'll have a museum there, we'll have some artefacts there. Mm -hmm. We'll be able to go in, use the meeting rooms, the space. So it would be great to see that coming back into use. Oh, marvellous. Will we be able to go ghost hunting? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you will. <laughs> I'm sure, sure that will bring lots of people in, <laughs> if, particularly if you find a ghost. <laughs> I'm sure, I've heard there's many. <laughs> um, also, the council is in charge of many different services. We have tourism, leisure, housing, health and social care. Do you think that the council is maybe involved in too many services? Is it too large? Mm, we run about 700 separate services. Mm -hmm. Um, some of them are statutory in the sense that we, we have to provide them. So education, we have mm -hmm. to provide schools. We teach 28,500 children every day. Um, mm -hmm. So you know, it's a big, big enterprise uh, doing that. Social care, we look after thousands of elderly people. We look after lots of young people. We, we look after children. We are actually parents to you know, about 200 children. Um, so a lot of very, very big critical services. Uh, it's interesting you say that we look after too many. Every time we say we're going to stop doing something, mm -hmm. there's a bit of an outcry. <laughs> we get people protesting. Um, so when we said that we weren't going to provide mm -hmm. luncheon clubs for the elderly, it wasn't a statutory service, mm -hmm. um, there was a huge outcry, but we managed to work with voluntary organisations, town and community centre mm -hmm. uh, councils, and now they provide all those mm -hmm. sort of in transition. Um, and we've pulled back and we no longer provide those services. Right. So, so would it be more cost effective to the ratepayer to contract even more of these services out to other organisations? Uh, it would, but it's a highly political issue. Um, if, for example, on residential care, we said mm. we were going to ask the voluntary sector to look after people in residential mm. care, um, I suspect we'd have protests on County Hall because we've already had them when we made that mm. suggestion. So um, I would agree with you, it probably would be more cost, cost effective. Mm. Uh, unfortunately, um, people don't want us to do it in many cases. Why do you think they don't want you to do it? Um, everybody loves to hate the council until it comes to the council not doing something for them and then they seem to love us again. Mm. So um, it, it's always quite interesting uh, when we do that, gen genuinely interesting, that you know, people are very keen to complain about things, but if we would suggest that we won't do these things anymore, uh, they don't want mm. that. They actually want us to continue providing those services. So um, things like branch libraries, which again we said we were going to close because they gave up very, very few books. People were up in arms about that. They wanted us to continue. And yet it's not a cost-effective service. It simply isn't. Um, but people don't like us withdrawing services. So, so it's a bit of a catch-22 situation. We do work very closely with the voluntary sector uh, in some areas, and we'll continue to do that. And perhaps we will try and do it a little more, luncheon mm -hmm. clubs is a really good example of that. The little branch libraries I, I mentioned to you, we've got volunteers now coming in mm -hmm. on some occasions and running those services because they wanted them kept open. Again, we've been able to save money by having volunteers going in, so we've kept those services running. I think more of that sort of thing we'll be trying to do. Um, the council at the moment is having to take 10 million pounds a year out of its budget. Mm -hmm. So last year we had to save 10 million, this year we're having to save 10 million, Next year, I think we'll have to save another 10 million. Mm -hmm. uh, it, you know, there comes a point when we cannot provide services. Yeah, so 30 million gone from our budget mm -hmm. in three years. That's a lot of money. And that is an mm -hmm. awful lot of money. And unfortunately, I can't see an end to that. Because the government mm -hmm. are already saying that after 2015, there will be more austerity. And all that means is they give um, Cardiff less money, um, the Welsh Assembly. The Welsh Assembly in turn gives us mm -hmm. less money. Um, so the whole the whole public sector is shrinking at the moment. So your your assessment of us having to be more efficient by working mm -hmm. with the voluntary sector and others, we're going to have to do that if the people want the services to continue to be provided. Mm -hmm. um, so it's it's not easy. It's mm -hmm. That part of the job is not easy. Mm -hmm. it sounds difficult managing all that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
So are there any plans to increase the tourism infrastructure to attract more visitors to the Millennium Coastal Park and uh, Pembrey Country Park? Yeah, we've been doing quite a bit of that at the moment. We're looking at Pembrey and looking at the options there. And again, as you mentioned mm -hmm. earlier, looking at perhaps working with others to get them to invest in Pembrey Country Park. We had Beach Break Live, 10,000 mm -hmm. students coming in. A lot of those had never been to the county before and were really mm -hmm. you know, very impressed by the wonderful beach the country park mm -hmm. and, and Carmarthenshire generally, so hopefully they, they'll come back in years mm -hmm. to come with children, with families and uh, you know, we'll see more tourists coming in. Um, uh, further, further along the coast we're still doing developments, again the Mechanics Golf Course, we wanted that championship golf course there because we knew that would attract people into the area. We've got the Discovery Centre, we see about a million visitors a year coming to the coast and, mm -hmm. and of course we just agreed with um, the um, Oh, the Stethford, that the Stethford will be coming to Llanelli as well. Oh, again? Yes, oh. so they're coming in a couple of years' time, so we're working with them. Mm -hmm. That'll be on the Millennium Coastal Park as well. So mm -hmm. we'll see thousands of people coming again to Llanelli. Mm -hmm. They were here in the year two th in 2000, mm -hmm. so they, they're coming back in 2014. Oh, so that would be really exciting. Is that going to be on the same spot as Yes, Boston? Festival Fields. Yeah, the announcement, the, well, the announcement is just going out now. Mm. In fact, I probably shouldn't be telling you this, <laughs> but the announcement is just going out now, so f festival feels. Mm. So we'll be working with them to maximise the opportunity for people mm. to come into Tenetli and see what we have to offer, which is a lot more than we did in the year 2000. Mm. An awful lot more. Well, that's very exciting. Yeah, we should look forward to all those exciting things happening. Thank you for speaking with us today, Mark. You're, you're welcome. We shall uh, come back for an update later on, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Lisa. Thank you.